thing. I hope all of you are well in India and Mother India is healing well. It's been a really painful journey for all of us. And it's, it hasn't been easy, but it hasn't been easy worldwide, to be honest, and especially for hospitality industry. So it must have been really painful. Do hope that we get over this very soon and get back to normal lives. So um, without further ado, I'll just start talking. Uh, what we have done during this 2020. So the shutter came down on us uh, around mid of March, 2020. So we had to uh, kind of, we were left hanging out. We had no idea whether we will be back within a couple of weeks, couple of months, or we may or may not be back at all in the business. So it, it was very um, tough time, very confused times, and there was very little information available to what we can or cannot do. But as world opened up and the government was quite good in terms of uh, aligning all the information for the hospitality industry that what do's and don'ts can be. So we slowly returned to work. So I remember going back to work sometime in May. So for most of March and all of April, we were holed up in our houses and decided not to go back to work. Uh, it was tough time, very confusing time, but we, it also gave us time to kind of rethink, rekindle, connect to our families, connect to uh, our surroundings as well. You know, I, I, I can say this, that for the first time, I realized that how many bedrooms were there in my own house because I, I had been so busy, I uh, couldn't even look at what I had left where. It, it was very, uh, a kind of innovative journey around my own house to find things. Anyway, coming back to work, uh, it was uh, more of a, Kind of whenever whenever there's a scarcity, the the innovation just kicks in. And before this lockdown, I had never done a takeaway. So we decided that out of five of my restaurants, three will actually go out and start opening to uh, start serving takeaways. And ingredients were really really difficult. So we had to step out of our comfort zone and look at what we had available. To be honest, for the first time, I I was cooking dishes that uh, with the ingredients that I had never thought of. So as, you, as UK happens to be uh, an island nation, uh, seafood was the natural choice because we had that in abundance. We were not being able to export that a lot. It was easily available or, and was being brought to our doors by the fishmongers. So we decided to dwell a lot on fish. Uh, then also different types of meat. Uh, I, Indian restaurants generally would always be associated with chicken, lamb, and goat, and we will never venture out beyond that. But this was the first time I decided, okay, we must go out and try uh, different types of protein we have available. So we, we were trying uh, rabbit, uh, we had venison. Uh, we, the first time uh, for my entire cooking history uh, in my restaurant menus, I started putting beef and pork because that's what we were getting. And UK isn't great when it comes to green vegetables. We do grow fantastic root vegetables, but when it comes to uh, vegetables like tomatoes and basil and all that, we, we don't have much of it. So we had to rely more on carrots, uh, beans, uh, turnips, potatoes, cabbage. Those were the vegetables we grow really well in this country. And I started relying on them for my vegetarian menus or the vegetable part, of the dishes that needed to be. And that has kind of sprung another wave, uh, innovation wave in our minds, in our, in, our, in our group, to be honest. And we have started looking at different ways of improvising all the time, which we already, always have done. But I think we were very complacent that whenever we wanted a new ingredient, you just call your supplier and get it. But this was the first time we were holed up and we had to use the ration that was available within our reach. And that's what we did. And it, it worked out quite okay, to be honest. Uh, Kanishka, which had just opened its door uh, less than a year ago when, when we were brought down to close because of Corona, uh, landed up being a restaurant of the year in London, uh, just on the back of what we were doing from little takeaway menus we were doing. So I, it gave me a huge sense of pride and achievement and to my team that even in, in the adverse circumstances like this, we could thrive and we could achieve what we want to achieve. So creativity cannot stop, to be honest. And I've always said this, that uh, whenever a cuisine migrates or a person migrates, 
uh, takes a piece of their culture and country with them to the new place and starts interacting with the local culture. And that's what exactly all of us who have moved out of India have done in our own surroundings, be it here in the UK or Paris and France or New York or San Francisco, wherever we chefs have moved, uh, we have always reached out for the local ingredients and tried to make them our own. So to be able to call ourselves uh, Indian restaurant owners or Indian restauranters or Indian chefs, uh, we got to delve into our own cuisine and learn from uh, our own country that what can or cannot be done or what's properly done, to be honest. But at the same time, if I continue to use the ingredients from India, apart from spices, I think I will, I will be cooking a very confused food for the locals here. And I may not be a very popular restaurant. Whereas if I use the ingredients which are available locally and people know them, uh, and I will say it in a very simple way, if I had salmon on my menu instead of pommes fries, I think I'll be a lot favored. Uh, the, that, that part of the dish will be a lot favored. If I had mussels on my menu, uh, instead of uh, clams from India. Uh, I think people would love that a lot more because they will have affinity to their own ingredient. They knew they would know their own ingredients well. They don't care what spicing or what flavoring it comes with. And I think that's the essence. Wherever you go abroad, wherever you move out, try to use the local ingredients, interweave your culture into theirs and become part of the society. Don't sit on the fence. Uh, because that will only make you uh, kind of separated from the rest of the world you are living in. So it's as, as a restauranter, I, I practice what I preach and I've always, always done that. I absolutely have embraced British culture and British ingredients and make them, I made them my own and I practice with them. I cook with them every day. And I think it has helped me push my own boundaries, uh, widen my own learning. Uh, not everything is perfect, but what is perfect, in my opinion, when we talk about Indian food, we, we don't have a cuisine of our own. We are a bunch of cuisines put together. So that's why I coined the term called cuisines of India rather than Indian cuisine. And I take pride in that, that we have cuisines of India because there is so much to learn from our own. Uh, I, my personal background is my family is from Punjab, but I was born and bred in Bihar, which is Charkhan now, Jamshedpur. So I've always been an Eastern boy in my heart, but strong Punjabi roots. So I always knew my Northern culture as well. Studied in Chennai. So I, I embraced South India really well. Absolutely love. I think uh, if ever I have to come back in the, on this earth as a human, I would love to be born as a Malayali person. Uh, I think the food is just amazing there. But when I when opportunity ar uh, arise two years ago in 2019, when I left Benares, and I had to open my new restaurant. I wanted to do something new, which I always have done. At Tamarind, I was doing Punjabi food. At Banaras, I pushed the boat out, made it into a modern Indian food. And then when I had to open Kanishka, I decided not to repeat any of those. And I went to choose something which is very little known, even within India, never mind abroad. And that was Seven Sister States. The cuisine is very specific, very difficult. You have to understand uh, the processes and techniques they use. So I took plenty of tools in those regions. I don't think I'm an expert. I'm just a student. I'm still learning about it. But we managed to put a wonderful restaurant, Kanishka, with Seven Sister States Cuisine. And it's thriving. It's only two years. Uh, and, and there's a beeline for people to come in. Uh, we, we don't, uh, we, we kind of, especially on the weekends, I, we don't have any table for next three months. So it, that shows that if, if you explore within your own, there is always enough innovations happening. There's enough inspiration to bring it to the palate, but bringing Seven Sister Cuisine here, I knew that I will not get a lot of herbs. I will not get a lot of ingredients here. So I just embraced what I had around me and that has worked out incredibly well. So they use uh, river snails. I use local snails. Uh, they, they do use venison because they are allowed to hunt there. I use local venison. So I have kind of improvised with the local ingredients herbs and all that I have improvised through spices, uh, chilies and garlic and ginger uh, and different types of leaves that they get there. I don't have the same breed, but whatever I get in my backyard, I use them and try to create something which is similar to that and putting a spin on it, make, making people smile, having, a fun, having fun with the menu, having a laugh on them. And I think that's what people want. When they come out, 
uh, they want complete enjoyment, complete entertainment. Uh, we are just not cooks, uh, but we are entertainers as well. Uh, it's pretty much like ha having working in a theater. Uh, when the curtain goes up, you got to perform. When the curtain goes down, you can take a sigh of breath or you can take a breath of uh, relaxation that now, now it, it has come to an end. But then rejuvenate, clean up, and get ready for next day. And that, that's our forte. That's what we do. And I absolutely adore doing what I do here. And I know a lot of people uh, in India, uh, in different parts of the country. I often talk to Gagan Anand, who's a, who's a great friend of mine. And he has done no different. You know, of, of course, he has gone on a very new journey. And he has brought Indian food a lot of fame. And what he does is quite unique. But he uses local ingredients. Uh, that's what he does. And that, that's his excellence, to be honest. I speak to Sridhar all the time in uh, States. And I talk to many chefs in New York. Uh, and they do exactly the same. We, we all have stepped out of our, our motherland and started doing what we do best from our own perspective. And that is helping us explore more, make us stronger, and be the part of the community where we live in.